Can you give our listeners an idea of what actually causes type 2 diabetes? Well, type 2 diabetes is caused by being too fat. You know, simply uh, people gain so much body fat that the body says enough, enough. Uh, it'll, it'll let you, the body will let you gain 20, 30, 40 pounds to get ready for winter time, you know, for the, uh, the famine that's coming. But after, and that's good for survival, uh, is to kind of bulk up some extra calories for the winter. But when you start getting into the 60 plus, 80, 100 pound range of excess weight, but I says, that's not so good. Uh, this is not a survival benefit to be that fat. You can't get up the tree to get away from the saber-toothed tiger. You can't get in the cave anymore. You're too fat. And so it develops insulin resistance. Insulin pushes fat into fat cells. Uh, the uh, insulin uh, becomes less sensitive as you increase body fat because it doesn't want you to get in a situation where you would develop, uh, you just become obese and you can't function. So it stops functioning well, the insulin does at the peripheral tissues. And at the same time, uh, as it decreases the ability of the body to store more fat, as you develop insulin resistance, you know, the goal is to not become obese, uh, the insulin isn't as effective at putting, pushing glucose into cells. And so the blood sugar goes up. And uh, the, of course, the best way to lose the fat is to fix the problem. And the problem is food. So there are uh, two categories of food poison to help people understand. Just like if somebody's a smoker, you say the way you solve the problem is you quit the two packs of palm oil a day. They say, "Uh uh-huh, I understand. Or if they're drunk, you say you stop the half a bottle of gin a day. "Uh Uh-huh, I understand. And they can do it when they're ready. But when you tell people they need to eat better, as uh, typically is done, uh, you tell them things like, you know, skin your chicken and skim your milk and, cut down your portions and all kinds of things. And people don't get that. Uh, and then when you tell them the truth, that the food poisons are animal foods and oils, they don't, they don't really, they, they were really in a, in a quandary then because they said themselves, that there's nothing to eat. What am I going to eat? And then they find out what the truth is. And I brought that out in well, many books. I've written 13 books. And they've also said the same thing, is that the human being is a starchitarian a starch eater, a starch of ore. And uh, all large successful populations of people throughout all verifiable history have lived on starch-based diets. Like for example, the Aztecs and Mayans were known as the people of the corn. For 1300 years, these populations lived on corn as their basic diet. And you think of Asia, the diet is uh, rice. Before 1980, when they're eating 90% of their diet is white rice, until now, they've changed from essentially zero diabetes and obesity to a population where over 12% of the people in China have diabetes and half are pre-diabetic. And so it's been throughout all of history. Is, uh, most of the common people, the workers, the soldiers, they lived on rice, corn, beans, potatoes. And the rich folks, uh, they would filter their food through a pig or a cow. And they wouldn't eat the natural starch. they eat the pig and cow. And uh, that's just not for human beings. So as a result of eating the wrong food, the poison, uh, they become sick with obesity and type 2 diabetes and uh, you know, all kinds of problems. Just look around you. More than half the people you see in, in the room right now are sick from eating like a king and queen. And the way you solve the problem is you just change it back to the human diet, which is a diet based on starch. But everybody's afraid of starch, even though that's what basically everybody's eating. Let's talk about that for a second. So you're exactly right. Everybody is afraid of starch. And a big thing that's going on, especially in the world of diabetes, is the ketogenic diet. And people can follow that diet. They get really steady blood glucose readings. They lose weight. Any any way you can lose weight. We used to wire people's teeth together. That was a common practice to lose weight. Why can people eat the ketogenic diet and see good blood glucose numbers if that is if the fat is the cause of diabetes? Well, it's being over fat. Their body body's over fat. Also, fat uh, uh, paralyzes insulin activity, and carbohydrate, even white sugar, makes insulin work more effectively. 
So it's, it's that part, but it's just, you know, being over, overweight that causes it. As I say, bariatric uh, surgery studies that have been published many places, including JAMA, show about an 80% cure rate from just uh, rearranging their uh, intestinal tract and causing them to lose weight. And yeah, it can be permanent because, you know, if you take part of your intestinal tract out or in some other way rearrange it, you become permanently sick and uh, you lose the weight permanently. So that's one way to cure diabetes. Yeah, but uh, unfortunately, the ketogenic diet actually is becoming, uh, is pushed really hard, including by the American Medical Association. And people buy into it because uh, they like uh, pork chops. As long as you cook them, uh, they won't eat that pork piece if you don't cook it. And you gotta put barbecue sauce on it. Otherwise it's too disgusting. But here, this is the January, 16, 2018 issue of JAMA. And uh, that's an article. I was going to sleep last night and just happened to be reading JAMA. It says, interest in ketogenic diet grows for weight loss and type 2 diabetes. Well, that was last week. When I wrote uh, the last book, probably the last book I'll ever write, it's called The Healthiest Diet on the Planet. It's a good book. It's real simple. Lots and lots of pictures. Uh, I started the book out. Let me see if I can find the page quickly. There are lies and damn lies is the first chapter. And what it says is damn lies harm the public and planet Earth. In June 2015, the Journal of the American Medical Association in a reckless opinion piece called for the U.S. Department of Agriculture and the Department of Health and Human Services to remove an upper limit of intake of total dietary fat in the most recent dietary guidelines for Americans. That's the 2015-2020 guidelines that we live under right now. Uh, and to my dismay, I wrote as the first part of this book, to my dismay, the authors of the article also applauded the elimination of dietary cholesterol as a nutrient of concern. Well, cholesterol is only found in animal foods, but they're still promoting ketogenic diets, which kill people. And there are still, quote, legitimate doctors out there that are behind this. A diet, as I say, was, which was limited once to kings and queens and pharaohs and priests and to Inuit and Eskimos. Otherwise, the other 99 billion people that have ever lived on this planet have lived on a diet that was somewhere around 70 to 90% starch. Uh, 